Good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting from May 15th, 2023 to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment and announcements? <laughs> Good evening, Lee Cooper, DPW Director. Um, I rise to inform the board and the public that we, the Cape Cod Commission is holding a workshop <coughs> on low-lying roads on Wednesday, May 24th <coughs> at 4 p.m. The meeting is going to be virtual, and I will get this over to uh, be posted on the town's website and DPW website and up to administration. Thank I want to let you know that this is coming. Great. Thank you. Commissioner. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment announcement? She's hell get old, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, Dave Gilmet, Chief of Police. So I'm just here to announce a, a, a personnel change at, at Sandwich PD, an unfortunate personnel change at Sandwich, Sandwich? PD. I'm sorry, Howitch. <laughs> I know what you meant. Old, old habits die hard, right? <laughs> Been here eight years, though. <laughs> at Harwich PD. Um, Officer Michael Porter has decided to retire. His last day was actually last Friday. Uh, Michael has joined us tonight, though I'm very pleased to see that. Um, long time, long serving uh, officer with Harwich Police. Started his career back in 94 as a seasonal police officer working summers. And then June of 95 became a part time animal control officer. So I guess back in, in those days, I'm told that was like a stepping stone into, into the police department. So Michael became a part time ACO. And in October of 95, became a full time animal control officer. And in November of 98, he was appointed a full-time police officer and attended the police academy. And uh, he didn't look back. So from that time on, um, he uh, quickly became an officer in charge, what we refer to as an OIC. And those are very critical people because they, they um, take the place uh, when a sergeant is not available to run the shift, the OIC runs the shift. So it's usually a very uh, you know, experienced and uh, confident individual that becomes an OIC. Then he became a firearms instructor for the police department, another critical role that we need. Um, and then eventually promoted to detective, um, where he worked in the detective unit and then was assigned to the Cape Cod Drug Task Force, which is a regional effort uh, of drug enforcement combined. It's uh, uh, detectives from local police departments who work with the state police uh, in, in drug enforcement. So Michael served a number of years on the Cape Cod Drug Task Force. Uh, so, all told, just shy of 29 years of service to the town of Harwich and 24 uh, full-time years. So, that's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of years, a lot of dedication uh, and time spent in service to the police department and the community. So, on behalf of the Harwich Police Department, I really want to um, express our gratitude and our thanks and our congratulations for uh, all those years of service to Michael. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'd have to chase after anybody. So okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Michael, we're going somewhere else. Yep. This is a new picture. For you. you want to comment on that? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Larry. It's your last I've, meeting. No, no. <laughs> That's a great spot for it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that, we were presented sure. that by the uh, fire chief and uh, fire association last week. That's uh, May 2022, our entire fire department. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good, I saw that on Zoom that it wasn't your person. So. <laughs> Back to public comments announcement. Committee vacancies, we won't read, but the um, list is in the packet. Mm -hmm. If you know anyone that wants to be on a committee, please uh, encourage them to come into town hall and fill out the form. Joe, you want to take the next two? Uh, thank you. Just a reminder that two weeks from today, uh, the town will be having its uh, Memorial Day ceremony. This year, the ceremony will be uh, at Brooks Park and Harwich Center. 
uh, begins Monday morning, May 29th at 9.30. Uh, all are certainly welcome, and um, it's a, always a uh, remarkable event and a great way for all of us to uh, remember and give thanks for those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And then, Mr. Chairman, if I could continue on. Yes. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow, Tuesday, May 16th, is the uh, Town of Harwich's annual town election. Uh, voting takes place at our community center at 100 Oak Street, and the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment announcement? Presentations? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could keep going, I'm on a roll. Um, it is uh, indeed my uh, privilege and honor as town administrator to present uh, formally to you, the Board of Selectmen, and by extension to our town, uh, your newest hire and our new finance director, town accountant, uh, Kathleen Barrett. Uh, Kathleen joins us from the town of Sandwich. I mentioned to her, you can certainly head to the dais. I, I mentioned to her that I met with my counterpart in Sandwich last week and offered my uh, apologies, but not really. We're great to have been able to steal her um, from the town of Sandwich, but uh, all kidding aside, uh, Kathleen has a strong background in municipal accounting. Um, and I know you folks had an interview process, and um, I think all sides were agreed that uh, she'll be a great fit for us. So it's uh, my privilege to present, uh, for the first time officially, Finance Director, Town Accountant, Kathleen Barrett. Thank you, members of the, of the board. Uh, so it really is a privilege, and he didn't steal. I came willingly. So. <laughs> Good point. Uh, no, I, no I'm, I'm thrilled to, uh, to come aboard, and I really look forward to... Um, June 1st when I start. So I've been uh, trying to do my homework and uh, you know, try to catch up and be ready to hit the ground running when I start. Excellent. Thank you. Larry, any comments? No, I'm just happy I'm aboard. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Don, same here. Thank you. Appreciate that. I, I can't say enough how happy we are to have you here, so thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you for, for having confidence in me. I really appreciate it. I look forward to working with Joe and, and Megan and uh, the rest of um, I'm already get to meet a couple of department heads, so that was it's good to have to see some familiar faces when I when I start. Welcome aboard. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Proclamation for Larry Ballantyne. Julie? There you go. Yeah. Resolution honoring the years of service of Selectman Larry Ballantyne to the town of Howitch, whereas it is appropriate for good citizens to honor their loyal and faithful public servants, and whereas Larry Ballantyne was elected to the Board of Selectmen in 2009, 2012, 2017, and 2020, and served as chair of the board and a member of the Board of Selectmen Interview Committee and whereas Mr. Valentine served the town diligently as a member of the Conservation Commission from 2004 to 2009, as well as an alternate member of the Pleasant Bay Resource Management Alliance Steering Committee from 2004 to 2009, and whereas Larry was supported by his family, most especially his wife Judy, throughout his years of service. Therefore, we extend our profound thanks and express, uh, express our deepest appreciation to Mr. Valentine and his family for his dedicated service to the town of Harwich. Speech. Speech. <laughs> well, uh, Judy's always claimed that the only reason I was selectman to avoid yard work, so I'm, <laughs> I'm probably in some trouble now. But you know, as I. I said at the, uh, at the town meeting when you read it, and thanks again, uh, this isn't about me, this is about what a great town Harwich is, and all the volunteers we have, our everyone help each other out. And as you know, as selectmen, you and selectmen before, and I'm sure after, spend a tremendous amount of hours, but they're well worth it. You meet so many nice people, good people in Harwich, that the rewards are outstanding. And the other observation I always make on a situation like this is, it's, uh, I can't imagine the issue that's ever come up to my, ever come to my attention that I haven't reached out and found an expert in town to help out. I don't know if it's because we have, making fun of older people, we have a lot of experienced people in town, but it's amazing the resources we have. And the, and the second part of that is, it's amazing how when asked, they almost always offer you help. Tremendous uh, town and the history and the culture we've created, so. Uh, 
this will continue. You know, it's time for me to leave. You start to think that you're smarter than the rest of the world. It's time to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, and, uh, and uh, I've enjoyed it, except for maybe one or two meetings that we all know about. <laughs> but it's been, it's been my pleasure. So thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. It's been great serving with you. Joe? I didn't know if you wanted to go around the table for his colleagues. I'll start with you. <laughs> you I said colleagues. However, um, uh, if, uh, if memory serves correct, um, you were the second chair that I served under, only because Julie served for a day and then left, and I still take it personally. Um, all joking aside, though, um, for me, Larry, um, there's any number of accomplishments I think that you should be remembered for, but truly there was none greater than um, you were the person in the chair during COVID. And so when the town, as everybody did, had to react, and we you know, went remote, and uh, the, your administration team went to the bunker, um, you, know, you were thrust in a situation that I don't think anyone could ever be prepared for, and you handled all of that. Um, with the same grace that I think you handle everything that you do for the town. Um, so for me, um, as a direct report, I, I've, I've always appreciated the support. I've always appreciated the straight talk uh, and always appreciate the leadership. So for that, thank you very much. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, I really want to thank you for taking over at the Affordable Housing Trust instead of me. So I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Best wishes. Yeah. Julie. Larry, I don't even really know where to start except to say that I'm going to miss you terribly. And the interview committee, I've enjoyed serving with you. I'm going to miss your expertise with the water quality stuff that you brought so much to the table and your engineering background and your overall demeanor, as Joe says. You, you just work with everybody really well. Even if we don't agree on things, you're always such a gentleman. So I'll stop there before I tear up. So. <laughs> Or, or start reliving the things we disagree on. <laughs> <laughs> but I will miss you terribly. <laughs> but we'll see you on the housing trust. Well, yep. Done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to go to the tale of two cities here just to remind you also that you weathered the storm during those uh, horrible liquor hearings. Uh, mm -hmm. No one should have been put in that position. Uh, you handled that well. Um, but just as important, and certainly for the town, uh, there's been no more ardent uh, supporter and uh, anyone who's worked harder on the, the idea of the sewering and how it can happen. And this has been going on for more than a decade, so everybody needs to understand uh, how much work you put into that. So the town owes you a debt of gratitude for that. Thank you, Don. I'm not saying goodbye. I'm good. I'll be here. I have two years left, so you can expect my phone calls. <laughs> All the expertise that they just talked about. Well, of course Especially the science when we talk about fertilizer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I don't have to rebut Don, or I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be me. <laughs> but the town owes me nothing. No debt of anything. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Lance. Oh, you're waving it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion on the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that the town vote to waive its right of first refusal for the sale of 15 Gomes Way, assuming that the conveyance uh, will retain its affordability uh, restriction on its deed. Second. Okay, moved and seconded, Joe. Any comment on uh, Don's comment? Um, I appreciate the, the statement. There is a permanent affordable uh, restriction in the deed, um, so that is expected to carry forward as it must. Nonetheless, I put it as part of the motion. Mm -hmm. Yep, no objection to that. Thank you. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. New business discussion on support of a proposed recreational program. Um, I'm going to have Jeffrey Craig. He's also on the Youth Services Committee. Join us at the mic. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Jeffrey Craig from Harwich. Um, I am here tonight to discuss a new proposal for a recreational facility for the town of Harwich, but that could also be utilized from Plymouth all the way to P-Town. Uh, this facility would be a Project Adventure ropes course. Basically what Project Adventure is, it was founded in Beverly, Massachusetts in 1971. It's a nonprofit agency and it specializes in adventure-based learning. Basically through adventure, 
there's a chance for learning and growth. Whether it's trying a food you've never tried before, taking a trip out of the country, you know, going out on our ocean, adventure leads to growth and learning and knowledge. So what they do basically is these courses which are basically geared towards multiple different kinds of groups. They allow for education, trust, social emotional growth, and also, you know, this, a sense of adventure and being out in the, good, the great outdoors. So with that being said, when I've discussed things with other committees, my own committee, I also went before the Harwich uh, Recreation and Youth Commission and I gave them a full spiel that was 40 minutes long. I'm not gonna burden you guys with that, but I got a unanimous approval from everybody on that board. I have a letter here that attests to that. It's also signed by Eric Beebe, because I did meet with him, because obviously this being a recreational opportunity would eventually fall into his lap and into that sector of the town. So I've also gone before uh, the school committee. The reason why I did that was to kind of plant a seed. Once I've discussed good options with Eric and the commission about where a good spot would be, the idea came that the best part, part of land would be the area in between the White House and the retirement community, kind of along the side of the road that goes up to the bus stop. That is town of Harwich land. Right now it is in custody of the school district. Um, I, knew, I knew going forward asking them that they weren't going to be like, sure, we'll give you the land. I'm just a citizen. But I wanted to plant the seed. And I really think that they took to it well. I had uh, extremely positive feedback from not only the committee but also from Scott Carpenter, who said that when he was at his old uh, district that the Project Adventure course that they had was one of the best programs they had and was the star of their wellness program for their, for their kids. So not only would this be good though for the kids, this could be used by sports teams, it could be used by professionals, as in like, you know, if a group of, you know, middle managers come for a, 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 a meeting at, you know, Chatham Bars Inn or at Waquasset, they can come to do team building at this course. Um, also would be great for local uh, community groups. Um, a previous course I had worked at, we worked with, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, we work with Alcoholics Anonymous, a, a diverse group of populations. Um, so with that being said, what I'm looking for today is I'm looking for support. Um, you guys are basically, you know, the next on my list. I wasn't sure if what the proper order was to be with this. Obviously, I'm kind of, even though I'm on the Youth Services Committee, I'm kind of approaching this as a, as a citizen, looking to benefit our town. Because this course, um, I, want, I want it to be equitable. I don't want it to be a money suck on the town. Um, this could draw revenue to the town and can also provide jobs. And it would be amazing for our school district. We already have adventure-based learning in the Monomoy School District. We even ha already have Project Adventure technically in the district. There's a small three-element course in the Slim Gym at Monomoy Middle, Middle School. Kathy Anderson runs it. She's certified in it. She's excited about this opportunity as well. You know, when I think about this and how it would benefit middle school kids, we already know they all do that amazing trip to Truro. I mean, how great would it be if a week or two before they went, they got to go and work on team building and trust before they go up on this adventure? It would kind of be a great uh, launch point for them. Um, so like I said, I, there's so many benefits all around. Um, one last benefit was even within our, our own town employees, even seasonal ones. When I talked to Eric and the commission, I said, I can see it now. You have your group of you know, counselors and, and, uh, and lifeguards, and they come and they do your orientation. And they, they hear what the ins and outs are, but then the next day, they're on the ropes course, learning to work together, which can only benefit our community even better. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm probably forgetting a few things that are on my note cards I left over there, but that's basically uh, what it is, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Jeffrey, very exciting. Larry? Thank you, this is a great presentation. Uh, in, in case of funding, I guess we always come back to funding. You'll be trying to search that out and get, what's your plans on that? So 
when I look at it, I, you know, and it obviously it'd be more out of my hands at that point dealing with the money, but you know, one of the, the four main categories for community preservation funds is recreation. Um, in the packet that you guys have, there is an estimate. It is from the December of 20, 2020, 2022 from them, and you'll, and you'll see the number on there, which is about 66,000 and change, which is, includes also training of people that would work the course. I know that as soon as we hit year one, that, that estimate's probably, you know, is gonna go up. I understand that. But for what this can offer, and the amount of money that it would be for land that possibly is already owned by the town, I think it could pay for itself fairly quickly. And so I, I kind of look at it as that, but I mean, hey, if I, if I have to have a bake sale, so be it. Well, certainly in discussion, so no. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks like really a great program. My, I guess my question is, having gone through some corporate team building type things, uh, I see some you know, all the positive in that, especially when we have uh, mental health issues and stuff, we're trying to pull those together. And if you coordinate with the proper, proper staff people at the, uh, you know, local medical centers and uh, our youth counselor in the schools. But uh, how would you, I mean, that, that all uh, demands, uh, I think, organization. Who, who organizes the, the events and makes, it, makes that happen? So typically what, once you get certified, by Project Adventure, everybody has to keep up their certification to work at the course, and you are what's deemed a facilitator. So when I worked there, we had a very diverse group of people. And because one of the neat things about it is, is that, you know, I mean, unless it really goes, catches on like wildfire, you're not gonna be booked every day. You know, there's only oh so many kids in, in all the districts around us, and so many people are gonna come. But it's gonna be used, you know, probably weekly. So we had firefighters on our staff, we had some police officers on our staff, because once you kind of have it booked out way in advance, because you're also dealing with schools and community groups and corporate groups where they, they have a budget, so they, they book it out way in advance. So we would put up the schedule, you know, a month or two in advance. And so you could know, you know what, yeah, I'm available that weekend, I'm gonna do that one. Yeah. And you could sign up, and it was, that was really neat, but it does take a certain special individual um, so if there was to be possibly like a subcommittee formed or another committee formed, um, um, that was discussed in the Recreation and Youth Commission that there possibly could be a committee made out of this for hiring purposes and uh, for oversight. Um, so that was discussed. Thank you. If I may, one final question. Uh, continuing that thought, when you look at the community then, who are the drivers, or drivers who you think will, your customers, so to speak, will send people to this or make this happen? Well, you know, even, you know, new hires, our police department, our fire department, I mean, when you guys have a board, I mean, you guys doing it, that'd be great too. That would build some teamwork. I mean, there's uh, all the people that are, are, are great nurses. They work together as a team on their floors anyways. If you know, a, a higher up sees like, you know, hey, you know, we're a little down right now. There's, it's getting a little chippy, you know. Oh, here's an idea, why, why not that? Yeah. Um, plus all the schools. I mean, the schools between, between Monomoy and the tech, I think it would be great. Um, Nossett's one right now. Um, I believe they had to dismantle it for their new construction. Um, I did talk to uh, the young lady that runs the Project Adventure course at Nosset. It's small, it's like three small elements. It was tucked in between two of their fields. You've probably walked by it if you've gone there. She was born and raised in Harwich and she was like, Harwich needs this. Um, but it would definitely take, you know, special people to run it, but it's really available, available for everybody. Yeah. You know, all ages. Um, one of the things I talked about with Project Adventure, I, I want some of these elements to be open to special populations. So if someone's in a wheelchair, they can still participate in this. I, I want it to be for our whole community that encompasses many different people. Great answer. Thanks for putting this together. Thank you. Larry, for the rest of the night, I'll yield you most of my time. <laughs> on, go ahead. Funny you should say that, Mr. Chair. I was going to say he's pretty much spent out every question that I had uh, in my mind. But I, I do want to uh, uh, chime in to uh, uh, 
your passion is terrific. Uh, it sounds like a great idea. I look forward to it getting fleshed out. All right, thank you. Julie? I agree. I, I love the idea. I read through the materials. I think anything that's got kids or anybody, not just kids, anybody not doing stuff on their phones and really team building and socializing and interacting is a positive. I just had a couple questions in the sense that, you know, I like your idea of the CPC and, um, you know, I'm thinking even with uh, youth services and opioid monies, maybe we could do a combo of, of those funds to get it <coughs> up and going. And then I guess the next question is, to your point, we don't have an answer, but would it be under rec? Would it be under the school? How, you know, how would we manage the it, overseeing? Of it would probably have to be under rec because initially, I, I, there was a conversation with both. Mm -hmm. The school said that they were supportive, but it wasn't something that they were willing to be in charge of. Okay. Um, <coughs> but they were, but they obviously really want to utilize it. Yeah. Okay. So that um, is which I understand that, but also if it was just for the school, um, that would possibly leave out all the other groups right. that could benefit from it. Right. No, I, I think being under the rec makes sense. And then the next question is, and that's a question for Eric about who would would be dedicated to, to learning and being the overseer and that answers really the question of <coughs> liability that would be back on the town if it was through the rec. Yep. So no, I think it's a, it's a great idea and a project and I'm in support of it. Excellent, thank you. Was it the consensus of the board that's here to support getting it to the next step? Yep. Uh, certainly. Yeah. Joe? Yes. Can you tell us what it's going to take to get it to the next step? <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I can't, not yet. Um, I, uh, I am resisting uh, being the skunk at the garden party. Um, I think there's been a, a presentation made that has a lot of uh, potential, uh, but I know that the land in question has um, a number of issues related to it. So if there is a consensus of the board that this is something the town would explore, I can certainly take those next steps. That is the consensus of the board. The, the piece of land in question is under the care, custody, and control of Montemoy Regional from, from what I was able to find, or at least my conversation with the uh, superintendent. And that, I guess, would be your first order of business is to find out if that is, in fact, true. Okay. And if not, um, I think last check, the town of Harwich owns about 400 lots that we're not using, so maybe there is another location if that one didn't. Certainly, uh, Joe, if you can start to explore how we bring this thing to the next level, that would be appreciated. Jeffrey, I'll keep you informed uh, as I get answers. All right. Well, I appreciate the time tonight, and thank you so much for letting me speak. If you could just email me the letter that you got from REC. Yeah. So I can add that to the packet material. Yes, I have it right here. Mr. Chairman, I do have that as well. If you need to. Disregard, we have. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, discussion on proposed deed rider amendment for properties at 1 and 3 Northwest Gate Road and 1028 Factory Road, Harwich. Don? Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself as having an apparent conflict of interest. Thank you. Joe? <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you'll see in the packet, uh, the town was copied on correspondence that was sent to the uh, Harwich Housing Authority. Uh, as you've seen from your agenda, it's relative to 1 and 3 Northwest Gate Road and uh, 1028 Factory Road. Uh, there is a request from, um, excuse me for one second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and sorry about that. Um, uh, as you can see in the packet, the, the property um, on the deed, there, is a, there are restrictions and riders between both the town of Harwich, uh, the Harwich Housing Authority, and the Harwich Ecumenical uh, Council for Housing, also known as HESH. Um, we have in the packet confirmation that I believe the right of first refusal or the uh, first request goes directly to the Housing Authority. Uh, you can see that they voted at their meeting uh, from their minutes attached that um, they are recommending that the management of said property uh, continue to be coordinated through HESH. 
So the question before this board is, uh, what are your thoughts on that uh, and what actions should the town take? Uh, if you're looking for staff recommendation, I would recommend that we also have uh, Hesh continue their uh, management of the property. Thank you. Larry? Uh, I'll go with the staff recommendation. Hesh is, uh, has a good reputation for managing properties and if they control it, see no reason not to continue. Thank you. Julie? I feel the same way. What do you want the motion to look like on that, Joe? It's a 10-year period of time that the request was made for. Um, let me just double check. I believe there's a motion yeah. in the packet, right? It's 10. I think yep. It's 10 years. Thank you. I thought there was, but maybe I. Well, to that to that point, Mr. Chairman, I will tell you that um, according to the letter. Um, the the time frame is supposed to expire uh, later this year based on the original documentation. So the request is to extend uh, from the past 22 years to the next 10 years. So the request is for, um, if I'm reading that right, for the um, management to go through November 14th, 2033. And all we really have to do is mention a 10-year extension. I think that would be fair. Right, Julie, can I get a motion? Yeah, sure. Um, I move that we, uh, we allow Hetch to continue to manage, um, let me get the <coughs> properties right, 1 and 3 North Westgate Road and 1028 Factory Road, Harwich, for the next 10 years. Second. Moved and seconded. Joe, is that acceptable? I believe so. Okay. Uh, if we have to bring it back, we will. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Thank you. All right, next up, discussion on proposed fee schedule increases for Harwich Community Center. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could start, um, you'll notice that there's technically two elements to the agenda item. Uh, the first is discussion on proposed fee schedule increases. Um, to that end, I will tell you that um, I've heard from several departments that are contemplating um, such fee increases, and uh, what I'm asking or what I'm directing staff to do is work through administration uh, before those come before the board. I want to make sure that we're aware of all of the potential fee schedule increases that are out there uh, and more importantly make sure that they were already factored into the information and material we provided to town meeting. The presentation you're about to hear matches all of that uh, and I uh, would certainly support the recommendation coming before you in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director. I have before you the information we are looking for to increase the fees at the community center. Uh, I will start by saying we began this process in January um, and have had several stakeholder meetings. Uh, we, meet, we have met with close to half of the clubs and organization, all 117 were invited um, and Several of them took us up on our offer. Uh, the facilities committee held open meetings, posted open meetings, um, and invited the public to come in and discuss. Um, the proposal in front of you is a slight increase. As we all know, the fees have not been changed since 2017. Um, the increases are small, manageable, and certainly the people who utilize the building, our clubs and organizations, had no problem with any of these. Um, the, what is different before you this year that has not been before is our request to define what a use is. A use is now going to be three hours and people will get 104 uses. Um, what was happening is one group would be there all day long and that was counted as one whereas another group came in for an hour so we're just trying to be fair and equitable in what we're putting forth so 
the yes, clubs no, and organizations have all met and dis discussed it and no one seemed to have a problem. Thank you. Of course. Um, John, I think Don's pointing out that we did not read the public meeting notice. It is not a public hearing, it is a public meeting. Don's gonna read that really quick. I'm gonna sit right here. <laughs> don't, go, don't go anywhere. You have to go through it you again, Carolyn. Okay, you got it. <laughs> In one breath. The Harwich Board of Selectmen uh, will hold a public meeting uh, per the Board of Selectmen policy or uh, changes to fees on Monday, May 15th, 2023, no earlier than 6 p.m. in the Griffin uh, Room of Harwich Town Hall, 732 Main Street. This meeting will be held for the purpose of reviewing proposed changes for the fee structure of the Harwich Community Center. The proposed changes can be found on the town's website. This meeting is also available remotely. Dial-in information will be posted on the meeting agenda, and it was uh, published in the Cape Cod Chronicle of April 27, 2023. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Don't have to repeat what you already said. You can pick up where you it's left an, off. What an opportunity to get in front of you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, <laughs> So really, I am just looking to see if you're supportive of the small increases to the fees and our definition of what a use is at the community center. Um, the no-show fee, which uh, I describe in detail about how it is, takes a room offline, and that happens mostly in our most popular room, the multi-purpose room, if groups don't show up. Certainly it can happen once, we're not looking to penalize anyone, but we have seen some groups where it's a consistent problem and we're setting up, our custodial staff um, are setting up for over 100 people, takes the room offline, hours that could be spent elsewhere within the building doing better work, so people were also understanding of what we were doing with that as well. It's not to penalize, it's really just to make people accountable for our building um, for the, all of the public to utilize. Thank you. Anyone in the public have any comments on the proposed <coughs> fee changes? Anyone online? Technically, I'm online. Joe? Um, the only thing I would ask is if there be a certain effective date. Um, just to be clear about that, there were some questions regarding the um, fee schedule for 204 Sisson Road. So I know there's references to fiscal years 23 and 24. So if there is an effective date, that would be helpful. We were looking to have this effective starting July 1, the new rates for the community center. Thank you. Thank you. Four questions, Larry. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Carol. I, uh, not really. I, uh, I'll go along with, the, with your fee proposals. My comment is, is that... Uh, Carol, I need to applaud your effort in bringing in stakeholder participation. And every item came up, I know that was the ladies on and others. She and the committee has been very careful to have a lot of discussion, open-ended discussion. And so you come to our meetings, uh, you know, with your proposals well defended in the public, which I suppose puts us on the spot because it's hard for us to object to it, but a job well done to, uh, to bring everyone in, into the discussion. Your last day, and you're giving me a compliment, Larry. <laughs> I see how you're doing that. I got you. Thank you, Larry. Julie? <laughs> no, I think it's great. I, I think they're very reasonable fees. And I, I actually, looking at uh, which page, uh, it's, it's the item number two where you're going to eliminate the yearly fee option for the for-profit groups. Correct. We, yeah. we think. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. They have options. They can certainly use our building, the 204, but this building, as you've all well defined, is really for our clubs and organizations, and, and that's what we're trying to do is be a partner with the 204, and, and we're not, right. we don't need to duplicate efforts, so. No, so that's great. No, I have no other questions, and thank you for the hard work. I appreciate it. Don. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to echo what they said. Uh, it, it's heartening. Uh, you kept the delineation between the nonprofits and the for profits. Uh, you, you did a lot of work to get to this point. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Can I get a motion? I'd like to move that we accept the uh, fee schedule as presented, effective July 1st, 2023. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 4 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Can I get a motion on D? I, I think Larry should make it. Okay. Interview committee. Yeah, Larry. The interview committee. Okay, I move to vote to approve the committee appointments recommended by the interview committee. Uh, number one is Robert Spencer, Bob Spencer, who's in our audience. Uh, Harwich Housing Trust, full member, term to expire 
June 30, 2023. That's completing an existing term. Uh, he's up again as item two, uh, Robert Spencer to Harwich Portable Housing Trust, full member term to begin July 1, 2023 and expire June 30, 2025. And number three is Claudia Williams, Harwich Affordable Trust Housing Trust, full member term to begin July 1, 2023 and expire June 30, 2025. Second. <coughs> Moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, just uh, as I mentioned before, these are uh, uh, so happy to have the, the uh, the applications because both of them come with a wealth we interviewed wealth of experience so we're looking forward to uh, moving on the housing trust actions thank you Larry. any further discussion all in favor aye aye, aye four zero thank you contracts motion on a mr chair i move that we approve a license agreement with a family pantry of cape cod corporation for use of land at 133 queen Anne road second moved and second any discussion no. all in favor aye, aye. Aye, four zero. Motion on B. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, vote to approve a change order, which would be number number two, submitted by Campbell Construction Corporation LLC for the Brooks Academy Museum Foundation repair in the amount of eighty-eight thousand six hundred ninety dollars. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye four zero. Mr. Chair, I move that, uh, that we vote to approve a license agreement renewal with the Friends of the South Harwich Meeting House Incorporated for use of the property located at 278 Chatham Road. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye 4-0. And Mr. Chair, Mr. I Chairman, if I could, uh, I apologize on this one. Uh, it would be to approve the contract and authorize the chair to sign. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve a contract with Tie and Bond LLC in the amount of $199,000 to update the local comprehensive plan and authorize the chair to sign. Second. second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Um, only that I'm delighted this is moving forward. We've been all been pushing the uh, LCP for a long time, and this is a firm action. So, And I know, uh, I know Jeff has been working on it, but this, as others, but this has been a... Uh, Discussions are ongoing, so. Yeah. Yep. We were very pleased with the results. Ty and Bond has a great background on this. They've got extensive experience not only doing these types of plans, but also these types of plans uh, on Cape Cod. So it's a great add, as, as Selectman Ballantyne is saying. Uh, I agree with that to, to further arm the committee and move forward on this critical document. So we're thrilled with their proposal. Great. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye four zero. Town Administrator's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, given the time that you have left, no, I'm just kidding, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Selectman's report, Julie? I don't have any. Larry? Uh, nothing. Don? Just get out and vote tomorrow. Good point. It's going to let us all get out of here peaceful, but I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't comment, and, and I do find social media sites, uh, in particular one in Harwich, Harwich old timers, as irrelevant as it is, um, due to the lack of participation other than a group of bullies, they constantly call out civility in their conversations and constantly attack elected officials. This past weekend, they went a little too far. And I gotta give props to Channel 18 for, for defending themselves on there. But for them to take their target off of me, which they should leave it on me, and go after Channel 18 and then accuse the board and the town administrator of violating civil, their First Amendment right mm. is, is such a cross awful comment. And to think that Sandra Hall would promote that behavior on a social media site and then wonder why people don't get involved in committees and don't get involved in running for the Board of Selectmen and don't get involved in helping in general and why we don't see young people. If those folks could look in the mirror, they're the reason why. Not this board, misreading committees, not any other reason. She's politically motivated. She's trying to ruin this town. I'm convinced of it. And as far as the politics and the non-politic conversations that she says her site's about, 
It started when the town clerk retired, when she sat in this room with other members of, of her committee, Charter Bylaw, and dialed for a clerk so they could continue to control that office. And watching that behavior is sickening. And it never gets called out. And I will tell you that I thank all of the residents that call me on a weekly basis to say they're only on there because of the amusement. But again, to call out Channel 18 and the hardworking people and Jamie Goodwin for, for purposely suppressing a debate is sickening and it should be called out. This is the worst form of bullying there is. And as a matter of fact, legislation has been um, proposed because of the effects it has on teenagers. But are we really still wondering why people don't want to be involved in the town of Harwich? I'm not. Motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero.